Easy people, nice things here. Um, this one I'm going to call Punch Drunk. I'm going to try and do this nice and quick. Uh, shout out to my May Irish and Steppers um, for no reason except it's nice to have friends, so random. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to try and do this really quick. What I'm going to show you is probably a lot of things. The reason why I'm going to call it Punch Drunk is because I'm going to do some drums. And I'm going to make them punchy or what our Atlantic friends say, drums that knock. So um, what I've decided to do is do it with a hip hop kit because I always say, not only that do I like hip hop, but usually if you can do something in hip hop, it usually works in other genres. So um, let me just say, punchy drums, it, it, what I mean by that, just in case anybody still doesn't know what I'm on about is to make your drum, your drum sounds like kind of working your speakers better I don't know, back in the old days, what somebody would do is get either a tape or a CD, play it in a car, and they'd play it next to something else, and they'd like something what's been released by some major label, and they'd be wondering, why does my stuff not sound like that? It sounds quiet. And um, these are the tricks to making it sound like something out of a big, big ass studio, which you can do on the Akai Force, believe it or not. Um, I will just say one more thing, right? This is not um, an in-depth dive into audio engineering. This is just quick, and this is to get people's, um, to get crunchy and good, chunky sounds. So if there's any um, audio file folks or something like that, and they say, you haven't mentioned this, or I have not mentioned that, or you really need to describe that in a better way, please do it in the comments. Um, I'm just going to say, this is for this, this makes it sound like that. Okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a um, kit, a hip hop kit. So I'll go hip hop. Um, I had one more I, I did like, so you can follow along. But you know what, I've changed my mind now, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to go with that one. Quiet. Right, so I'm going with roasted. But there's a few things I'm going to be pointing to on this screen you're not going to be able to see because it's just the nature of an iPhone 6X, S, a 6S, no, good lord, it ain't even a 6S, it's a 6, um, iPhone 6, I'm going to update sooner or later anyway, but it is what it is, so, um, so let's go, right, I'm going to do a kit, I'm going to get a drum kit together, um, Something like that, I don't know, something. Yeah, something, I don't know, I'm making it up as we go along. Here we go, let's see. So. That'll do me. Let's, let's get some hi-hats in, why not? Yeah, all right. I'll tell you what. Just for all the people who don't like quantize, I'll turn the quantize off and do this now. Okay. Okay. I was gonna add some other stuff, but I won't. I'll just do it with the drums. So we'll just get the drums punchy and then we can talk about other things. So, a couple of things I'm gonna do, cause I should have done that when I loaded it up. This, the drums what come with these, and uh, it's a stock sound, and I did mention the sound, and no I didn't. It's the roasted kit. So it's a hip hop roasted kit if you wanna follow along. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip this back out because they try to help you, which is nice, and they, they bring some... So this is what this kit sounds like. Um, let me just double check that that's true. Yeah, this is what this kit sounds like, just like with no dynamics to it. That's all right. It's not doing anything. It's not doing any harm to anyone. Now, if you look at this... In this mixer, you can probably see these little lines, little red lines, and what they are is the peak. So if you look at my voice now, I'm going to press this to reset. 
So when I talk, that's the peak of my talking. If I was to yell, it would go to that height. And what that's saying is that's where it reaches. That's not the sound of the, the level of the sound. While I'm here, um, what they've done, I've, I'm sure this is new, is there's two white lines and that's showing, that's interesting because that's showing the true RMS, I think, of the input. So it's saying, well, this is the average of what I, my sound level is. This is the peak of what it is. And um, this is a general kind of level of my sound coming in. So let's say that we'll go to the, uh, we'll go to the drum kit, what we've done. And um, what I'm going to do at the moment, hopefully, is I can talk over this. Do you know what? Just to make life easier, just in case you can't hear me, I'm going to side chain this. So, right, so that's turned down. And so I'll just I'll just stop talking whenever I, I, should, need it, or I should stop talking all the time. But anyway, I digress. So this is this kit now. And you can see it's peaking great and that everything's green. Mine's red because it's going too loud and whatever. I'm not bothered about that. that. We're not looking at that. We're looking at this. So what there is, is there's an area where like we need this boosting. We want this about minus 12. You can see it's like minus nine now. We want it kind of all the energy around in this area because that'll make it louder. Um, and it'll, it'll, it'll be bigger, it'll have, a, it'll have more dynamics. That's what we want anyway. So the first thing what we're going to do to attack this is we're going to shift mixer. I'll, I'll just carry on playing the music and talk over it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do shift mixer. And what shift mixer does, it takes us to what's called the pad mixer. And that's all of these kits, all of these sounds here. It's the mixer for a drum program. Now, what's great about the new one, and I will say this um, without the music on, yeah, because I've just turned it off. They fixed the thing that I, I requested. So I'm so happy about that. And what that was is whenever you press this, it takes you to where that sound is because before you had to go and find that sound. So that's brilliant. So this job is even twice as easy as it, as it used to be. So I've got that there, right? I'm going to go to the kick because I want this kick to be more punchy. And a quick way of punching up a kick, kick and making it sound, well, a kick, make it sound punchy or any sound really, is to move the attack to make it have a stronger attack. So the attack is based on this transient. The transient is this thing here, the wavelength and how it is like, there's no transient there because it's it's just silent. This is the wavelength. So what I want in the attack is the beginning of the sound. And I want to make that beginning of sound more prominent. I want that to come through a lot more. So like I said, shift mixer. What I'm going to do is they've got a thing here where all Miley does it. It's a really great effect and it's called a transient, air transient. Now, there's loads of different ways you can use it. You could use presets. I won't because you don't really need to, you only need to look at one thing and it's the word attack. And by turning this up, it will make things more punchy. That's it. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to switch it on and off and you'll hear the difference. So that's it. Job's done. Right? No, it ain't. I want the snare so as well. So I'm going to go to snare. Now, there's two ways, again, you can attack this. I could turn this up or whatever. But do you know what? We'll just talk about transients and we, we'll do it the real simple way. I'm going to keep this more simple. I was going to show some other stuff, but I'm going to, I'm really watching the time because it's, it's nearly 10 minutes now. So let's do a transient on that. Same thing again. What we're going to just do is we're going to just fix the attack. That's nice. One more thing. We're going to go to the hi-hats. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to filter out the bottom end of that hi-hat. I'm not even going to EQ it. And why am I filtering out? Because... I don't want the rest of that low frequency, all of them low frequencies to affect the rest of the things I'm using. So let me go to that and go to filter, select it, go in here. And then I'm just going to go to this preset here. 
it says high pass filter. I'll press that. I'm going to do the resonance just a little bit more. Maybe I'll bring it down a bit. So this is with it off. With it on. Now you probably notice something and are like, well, wow, that's interesting. He didn't turn anything up. Yeah, because this is the thing about EQ. Sometimes subtracting it, something is better because I try, I got rid of the low frequencies on that hi-hat. It meant there was more space for that hi-hat to, to breathe and move in because it wasn't, it wasn't like summing. It wasn't adding to the low frequencies. So it sticks out more. And it could be stuff like that. Is It's as simple as that. To tell the truth, if I really wanted to get scalpel on this, I would add the transient to this. I would add um, a filter to this and fill it out even the lower levels. I'm not going to go like this because, look, it's 11 minutes now. So, all right. So, we've got that. That's nice. And we can look at that. And, oh, yeah. Good Lord. I forgot something. I forgot to mention something. So, right. The thing about the transient... And I'll, I'll, no, I'll play, I'll keep playing it. Right, you can't see this, but there's a thing here. There's two of these now, right? This is the input. This is what's coming in and this is what's going out. You always want to make sure on any of these types of things when you see them that it never goes to a plus because a plus is bad. A, a plus will do what's called clipping and that's bad and it'll make the sound quieter overall so you always want that to be either no or minus minus is better um because of this transient and this has got a limiter on this is fine so we can just leave it as it is with with no and we're not turning anything up so we're not troubling that we're just fixing attack and it's nice and simple and that's it bob's your uncle so the last thing you you, you want to do just to get that up to a nice a chunkier level is we're just going to add a maximizer and we we'll go to dynamics and we'll go to maximizer and we'll add a maximizer and there we are and what, what we want to do is we want to fix that maximizer so for the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to bring everything back to nothingness right as you're starting now that maximizer is not having an effect what i'm looking for is the threshold so i'm looking in this thing all of this stuff what's bouncing around and i want to bring all that bouncing around stuff up to a higher level i want to keep an eye on this at the moment this is fine because this is not point what it's like 0 0.1 that's perfect it's in minus as long as i don't see a plus on that that's fine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring this threshold down because i want the, to increase this area so i'm going to bring it down as long as i keep an eye on that if you do it too much you get a squash sound I don't want to, I want to keep that snappiness still there. I just want it kind of louder. Okay. So, um, I could, I could turn down the ceiling. Um, shall I? Let's try it. Do we want it? No, we're fine. We're fine. Right. Um, this is like, for want of a better way, this is how punchy and snappy it is. Sometimes you don't want things to be too snappy because it can start sounding clicky. Um, this is all right as it is because it's drums. If it was vocals or something else, maybe I'd want that to be what it has as soft. So an overall mix, maybe I want that to be soft. This release is the thing what will stop it from like squashing. The, co the closer this is, the more like a crunchier sound it is. So observe. You see, you can hear all the air and the hissy things. And depending on what you want, you might want it to be all freshy like that. I don't want it to be that. I want it to be nice and snappy. So I'm keeping it there. And one last thing is this. And what that is, is LF stands for low frequency and it's low frequency mono. And it's because at the moment there might be, the bass might be coming out of the left and right speakers. There might be certain frequencies what are spread across the stereo field. I don't want that. 
you want the bass to be centered. Whenever you make music, you want the lowest ends to be centered. Doesn't mean you, you need the bass to be all centered, but that's a different thing altogether. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this up to a frequency where I'm comfortable. I'd say around 90 to 100, 90 is better, I think, because you can have a little bit more spread. So between 90, I'm just leaving it at 91. So now we've got this sound. So let's have a look. That's not point one. So that's perfect. So then what does that mean? That means that nothing's clipping. So we've got a chunky sound, but it's not clipping. And that's what we want. We don't want the sound to clip. So this is what it's like with nothing on from what we did. And you can go in and go back through this video, pause and look at what I've done. So I'm taking off the maximizer. I'm going to take off um, the uh, transients. And you know, I'll take them all off, right? So I'm turning everything off. And this is what we had. It's all right. But then we did this. And I did the release to make it a little tighter. All right, 16 minutes, we've got there. I'll play it one more time. Now, me personally, I think that's punchy. I think I'm gonna go have a beer. So hopefully that has helped you. I hope that has helped you. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Please subscribe. And um, I'll catch you soon next time. And until then, um, I'm, I'm all thumbs and three eyes. Ah, uh, look at this. That would, that would normally be in the picture. So, yeah. Peace.